Last time we looked into the theme of setting time and how we could create products that represent how we could set the time in new, alternative and interesting ways. This time I wanted to look into setting the environments and how we can create a product for that maybe. First thing I looked into were standard classical paintings to see how I could use them to influence my theme. I decided to look into J.M.W. Turner, as many of his paintings depict the landscape manipulated in such a way that it takes from reality, builds upon that reality, and then depicts it in a beautiful art style. This research into J.M.W. Turner did not amount into much by itself. What I did find out was about Olafur Eliasson's colour experiments. Eliasson, through analysis of pigments, paint production, and application of colour, set out to mix paint in the exact colour of each nanometer in the visible colour spectrum. Specifically, I became enamoured with his Turner colour experiments which isolate the colour and light created by Turner in his artwork into the colour experiment form of a circle. Eliasson states that the schematic arrays of colours on round canvases generate a feeling of endlessness and allow the viewer to take in the artwork in a decentralised and meandering way, which is done to invoke Turner's effects of creating an ephemeral scene in his artwork. More research into Eliasson provided me with a greater range of artwork and ideals that I desired to follow, with such art as Eliasson's Color Mirror Wheel, Beyond Human Resonator, Interpretive Flare Display of Unthought Thoughts, and Your Uncertain Shadow, all of which combine to really impress me with his work with creating environments that can develop powerful messages and change a person's reality, even for just a moment. I really liked this concept that Olafur Eliasson had come up with, so I wanted to create a product that could set an environment in such a way. Whereas Eliasson's product created a shift in reality for just a moment, I wanted to create a shift in reality for an entire time, where you could create a paradise, a reality shift, no matter where you were. With this being said, I began looking into colour. Having researched a video recently about colour theory and the science behind it, I felt myself relatively prepared for this idea, and I decided to also look into people like Joseph Albers' book about the interaction of colour. I did this to gain a greater understanding of not only the science behind colours, but also the reason, the actual effects the colours had on each other. I found myself particularly interested in uh, an illusion called the simultaneous colour contrast solution, where you would have two blocks of colours, which are the exact same colour, surrounded by two squares, which were not the exact same colour, but completely opposite, which would make you think the two different colour, original squares were different colours, but in fact they are the same. I made some quick experiments with colour, how acrylic affects the colour of the mirror, and how reflective colours can mess with cameras, alongside some quick tests of new dyes for resin, which unfortunately spilled out from the pond due to a poor use of glue. I also wanted to create some quick models to help me experiment quickly with some new concepts, such as metalwork and concrete, and I did that so. My first model was to help me experiment with concrete, while at the same time exploring the theme in, of set in a very literal sense. Having flowers slash plants that had fallen onto the floor be set into a concrete land slash soil. I also used a vacuum former and a gerbil trimmer to cut out a plastic bowl to use as a storage for water. My second model was for me to experiment with metalwork, which was my scrap metal park, where I took spare pieces of metal and used tin scissors, hacksaws, and a blowtorch to bend corners, cut out shapes, and do other such things with sheet metals. I then assembled all the dirtier scorched pieces of metal outside the edge and put all the clean fresh metal in the middle surrounded by a layer of mesh. This would represent the theme of struggles and troubles surrounding your goal and the final layer to break through before you can achieve your desires. I also quickly created a sketch, 3D model, and quick model of a cube light source that I decided to name the Hyperlight Cube to see the effect of light travelling through resin, as well as test out some new silicon moulds and an idea I had for lighting. I did some more research and came up with an idea for some form of flexible acrylic sheet that could be manipulated over a light source to create different colours. The idea evolved into a sketch and 3D model I called the Colour Planetarium after Richard Colour has influenced a lot of my research into colour science. This concept could be expanded upon greatly to create a variety of patterns, colours and effects that could fit this theme perfectly. However, the idea of planetariums and light projectors in general was thor so thoroughly explored so I decided to think of a new line of thought. I looked to nature for inspiration as I felt that as the origin of all these environments, this would be the best place to look for inspiration. I found that plants could have an extremely beneficial effect for your well-being and even had a research into a process called ecotherapy which has shown promise in assisting with mild to moderate depression as well as relieving anxiety. I decided to set myself a goal of drawing up sketches for every single plant in my house. At the same time, I drew up a list of every single household item I could find in my house. This led to me deciding to find every, ske every sketch I made with every household item I made and make a list of items based off of nature and household items that one could use. In doing so, I found myself, much like with the setting time video, coming across two different particular themes within my sketches and ideas. 
those being, once again, other ideas, which are just including all separate ideas that didn't relate to my main thing, and lighting ideas, which I'll come to later. Among the list of sketches I made, there were several which I didn't make any quick models or physical models for due to, due to a lack of time being allowed to make these things. I want to clarify that that doesn't mean that they're forgotten, that they're just don't have any models made of them other than their sketches. My other ideas ranged from simple ideas such as panel designed furniture, to slightly more complex with my leaf umbrella combination and fern inspired coat hangers, to even more complex examples such as my organic wardrobe, in which I plan to use special lighting such as T5 HO fluorescent tubes and LED horticultural lighting, as well as storage space to grow a range of plants in these spaces, and also brightens one day as they pick clothes to help freshen one's mind at the start of the day. Now having done research into how lights can help plants, I began wondering if you could have the same thing affect the human mind, and I found that this was actually quite true. Forbes had done a survey where 40% of men said they suffered from bad lighting in the work department, and 80% of men actually would much prefer to have better lighting to improve their overall mood and mental health. It is common knowledge that poor lighting can lead to such issues as eye strain, headaches, fatigue, increased stress and anxiety, and a myriad of other mental health issues, which is why you def when make designing a lamp, you definitely want to make sure you get the right lighting for it. In some cases, poor lighting can even result in conditions like seasonal affective disorder, which is definitely what you don't want in a work environment, especially when they're having to go from home to work every single day. And this kind of effect doesn't just apply to the work environment, it applies to almost every single environment you could think of, including your home, your friend's house, it, it, anywhere. Mm. So of course, having looked into the effect of lighting on the human mind, I decided to look more into any types of lighting that I can use in combination with my nature ideas right now. I looked at some simple lighting concepts at first, with concepts ranging from moss-like structures that could be stuck wherever and just add some lighting to any part of a room, like a fridge or a cupboard, to a large wall-hung fern-shaped light which would illuminate the entire wall behind it and act as casual lighting. I decided to look back at my work with metal and experiment more with metal making, developing two ideas in the process, those being that of a metallic bouquet, which could have many individual flowers light added, as well as my metallic flower lamp, which could feature many curling petals surrounding a simple light bulb to illuminate the room, or maybe just as a desk lamp, preferably using beneficial lighting for plants and for people, as mentioned prior. I considered a more complicated reverse potted plant design, where you can see the roots emerging from the surface of the soil instead of the other way around, and clinging to a single point of light, representative of the energy that the roots require to sustain the plant. At the same time, I managed to have some. I managed to perform some experimental processes to, using air applied steam bent wood to compare the differences and the advantages of either process. Finally, I came to the end of my stream of nature-based lighting with my two favorite design concepts. One of which was my idea of lighting that could grow with your plants and live in your room. The best example of this that I could find was bamboo with a seven to ten year life expectancy, relatively consistent thickness once fully grown, as well as the capability to grow indoors for some species. The idea was to take a section of the bamboo and replace it with a lighting source that could glow casually, thus lighting up the room and creating a very nice atmosphere. It would also result in less space being taken up, which I believe is a huge priority as you could combine your plants and your lighting into one space and therefore have a much more improved beneficial impact. I attempted to make some physical models, at first trying to make a resin cylinder by turning a block of resin, but unfortunately found that this would chip too much, so I just used them for some other resin tests. Instead, I decided to take a wooden cuboid and turn that to the wood surround the resin cylinder, which I molded instead, and then used Photoshop to add some lighting effects. For my other final idea, I thought more about how lighting was to influence the user's primary sense, the vision, and how I could possibly expand upon this idea and make a product that could influence the user's senses in more ways than just light, such as smell and sound. Doing some more research into this, I decided to make a small flower-like shaped product, which could be placed at any room, area, or anything, so it would have great portability, therefore allowing you to set the environment wherever you go, and it would be able to change the smell, the sound, and the lighting of the area it's placed in. I made two different models to explore two different ideas, one of which had a static form, with the speaker in the center and the light coming off from the edges of the petals, the second model having petals that as they get moved down result in the central light piece growing in luminosity. I also made a quick vacuum formed scale model to represent the idea of the petals moving up and down in real life, as well as to create a generic size for my product, which you could have multiple of which to place in the room and thus create a nice atmosphere. The idea of combining nature, the origin of all environments, and lighting, arguably the most important part of setting an environment, really helped me create an idea that I really 
felt represented this theme of setting environments extremely well. Now with all these experiments and models being made, I found that I had no distinct final proof of concept apart from the final two models I made. More of a general idea of how hey, one nature-based lighting as it just it works so well together with circular thinking of nature improving mental well-being, lighting improving mental well-being, lighting improving nature, nature improving lighting, all sorts of stuff. Regardless, that's about it for the theme of setting environments. What I really want to do now is look into the final theme set in motion, which I will have even less time to do. So let's see how fast I can do it right now.